Thank you very much. Uh, for the beginning, before I start, I just have to ask you to, to excuse me something. Uh, I will talk about my personal experience, and uh, if you think that there is too much me in this talk, then uh, don't take it too seriously, it's just my personal uh, experience. It's not because I love myself, it's quite opposite, but because I just want to, to, uh, to I just want to, to, uh, uh, to show you my, my experience through my life. Uh, this is the map of the country that I was born in. It's named Yugoslavia. Uh, and uh, when I was young, I was 13 years old. Uh, I drew this map on the piece of wood, uh, hammered some nails in the wood, uh, drew, drew this map, hammered the nails in the positions where the biggest uh, towns, cities in Yugoslavia are, and made the, the list of those cities on the right side, as you can see. I nailed the, the I, I hammered the nail uh, uh, near each uh, name of the town. Connected those nails at the back of that board, and uh, just made the simple circuit. I was 13 years old and I, I didn't know anything about electronics, but I knew how to close the electric circuit and to, to light up the lamp, which is in the middle on the top, as you can see, in series with, with the battery. So, if you uh, take this left probe and connect it to one nail, on the position of the city, and if you know where is that city, uh, you can uh, connect another probe with, the, with, the, with that city. If you are right, then a lamp will light up. If you are not, it will not. That's all. I didn't uh, need too much knowledge for this. I was 13 years old and I sent my project to a magazine which was named Technicke novine, it's technical papers. And I was very proud when, they, when I saw it in that magazine, and uh, I even got some fee for that. And I was very young, but, but everything started good. Everything started very nice. So uh, it, uh, it encouraged me to, to continue. Uh, the one thing that I didn't know about this is that I made my first logic gates. There are 17 cities here. That means that there are 17 end gates here. That's what I didn't know. I didn't know what's, what are logic, logic circuits, but I, I built them at the beginning. So, I went on. For the beginning, I needed a lot of electronic components. There was no internet then, of course. I had no literature. There was no literature here about those items. But I, I, I had to collect somehow the knowledge about all this. I collected some transistors, you see them here. Transistors were, were very, very expensive at that time. You won't believe you, you, they, are, they were very expensive. But uh, I went to the junkyard and, and just picked up some old, uh, some old units and desoldered the old transistors and used them. The same was with the diodes, with the resistors, with capacitors here. And of course, I needed some electronic tubes. So I started my work. I started working, and for the beginning, I was interested in ham radio. I was ham radio operator, and I've got my license. I passed all the exams, and I got my call sign here. You see it here. It's YU-10PC, 
and starting build, building my, my first radio transmitter. It was nice. I, I joined the radio club and uh, picked up a lot of knowledge from the people who they, they were much older than me, collected a lot of my knowledge. But uh, there was something, I thought that it will be my future. I, I love the electronic from the beginning. I thought that it will be my future for my, my, my whole life, ham radio. But uh, something appeared that spoiled the whole thing. We've got ham radio units which were commercial units. You can buy them. Now compare those beautiful ham radio with my garbage down on the table. It's, it's really not, not so uh, encouraging. Uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Uh, the, the, another, the another thing which, which was not so uh, good for me is that when you had no commercial ham radio units, uh, you had you can talk on the band with, with the with the people who uh, fr from the whole world, the people who made their uh, ham radio units with their own hands. They had to have knowledge, but to, to buy this beautiful radio unit, you you don't have to you don't need to have knowledge. You have you need to have money, and if you, ha you have money, then then you're not. Interested, interesting uh, friend for me on the band. Uh, I think that similar thing happened with computers. Commercialization destroyed computing, but it happened uh, a few decades later. Well, then I had nothing more to 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 have with ham radio, because I was not rich, I couldn't buy this ham radio unit. I was a poor guy and I, I just had to leave it. I was not welcome anymore. So I started experimenting with my own logic circuits. I even didn't know that they are called logic circuits. You see, I, I didn't have enough knowledge about electronics about the theory of electronic circuits. But uh, the, the great advantage of, of uh, dealing with digital circuits is that you really don't need too much knowledge of electronics. You just have to be interested and to love this area, and, and I was interested and I loved it very much. I said that I had no... Uh, documentation, no literature about this, no internet at in that time, of course, and uh, I just wanted to make the circuit which can memorize one bit of information. I didn't know that it already exists, but I invented my first flip-flop. I really invented the first flip-flop, it, it was my invention. The only thing is that I didn't uh, draw it like on the left side, which is which is usual now. I I just draw it uh, like the right one, but which is exactly the same, but in some other arrangement of components. And I start making my own uh, digital devices, and it was the real thing for me. I'm still doing it. <laughs> my first, my first uh, project was digital clock with Nixie tubes. Have you ever seen those Nixie tubes working? They're, they're really nice. They're really, they, they glow in the darkness. You can't imagine how, in that time how, how thri thrilled I was to see it work. But it worked, really. Uh, this is not that one. I have not the photography of, of that, uh, that uh, digital clock. This one I found on the net and it was quite similar to my clock. So uh, I can remember it was almost the same like this one and it worked. But uh, 
I also heard, I didn't try to understand computer at that time, but I heard that there is something new on the market. It was um, maybe uh, the first half of 70s. Uh, in 73 years I was in the army and, and I tried to, to find as much information about microprocessors and computers, but I, I didn't manage. Uh, when I came back from the army, I uh, just uh, couldn't gather enough. I, I, I didn't have that... Uh, that whoa information to just to understand how computer works, but I was lucky enough to to get some book which opened my eyes in that moment. It's this book. This is that book. I will I will I will keep it for my whole life, and I love it very much. When I saw this book everything was quite clear to me. How microprocessor works, you see, it does not look too much uh, attractive. Even, even its, its headline, Z80 Assembly Language Programming Manual, does not sound too good. But when I saw the first instruction, when I saw uh, the description of the first instruction, it is, you have to load one register from another register. Everything became cl clear to me. You see, the first two binary digits, this is 8-bit processor and it has 8 bits, as you can see. The first digit I saw, oh, 0, 1 means load. Then I know. It goes to the instruction decoder, first two bits. The next two bits are destination register, then those three bits go to the... Uh, uh, destination register decoder which uh, issues the right enable signal to those old eight, to those 8 bits of the selected register and the next three bits are source register they they just uh, generate through the decoder again generate the output enable signal from source register. Everything was clear to me, everything. And so when I opened next and next page, everything became clear to me and I couldn't sleep that night at all. I was so thrilled that I couldn't sleep that night. And that, that was the day when I fell in love with microprocessors, especially in assembly language. And now I don't use any language anymore. I, I do all my programs in assembly language. Maybe, maybe that's uh, strange for you. Uh, I've heard a lot of things about, uh, a lot of, lot of opinions of people who tell me that I have to, to change something to use the higher languages, but I, I, I never managed it. I said higher language is like uh, uh, when you make sculpture out of Lego cubes. But I want to take the hammer and to take the stone and to make my own sculpture of the stone, not of Lego cubes. I want to do it myself. I want to have my freedom. And that freedom uh, is... Assembler is the only language that can give me, give me that, that freedom. The next uh, step was to, uh, to have some microprocessors, some EEPROMs, and some glue circuits, some, some uh, logic circuits, and I did it. I uh, ordered two microprocessors, two Z80 microprocessors from USA, they costed uh, $20 each, and I was waiting two months to get them. They arrived, finally, finally, and uh, I, had, uh, I got four EEPROMs from my godfather. He gave me four EEPROMs, 2708. They are one kilobyte EEPROMs. But I had to make my own programmer for the beginning. I also don't have the 
photo of that programmer, but it, it looked something like this. It was, of course, it was, it was not a processor-driven uh, programmer. It was hardware type. They asked me, why didn't you make it with the processor? How can I make it when I need the program? When I have to burn the EEPROM for that programmer, it's like, the, it's like the key in the box. When the box is uh, uh, locked and, and you have the key, but it's in the box. The same is here. I had to make it to... to realize it in hardware completely, and they did it. Those uh, uh, displays, seven-segment displays that you see, maybe you think that those are LED displays, but they are not. There were no uh, LED displays at that time. Those are uh, some displays which were called Minitron displays. They had some kind of filament inside, like the bulb. Like the bulb, but uh, of course weaker as you have to look at them. And, but they worked fine. They worked fine. Uh, I, I had the three rotary switches. You see them down, uh, uh, which I used to enter the octal code for byte by byte. Okay, and and when I when I insert the EEPROM in the socket. Uh, at the right side, uh, I just had to keep the prog key for about two minutes. Then I said, well, why I, I just uh, put the key here? Why didn't I put the switch? I had to, 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 to hold my finger for two minutes. But then I saw that, the, that they, this, this key was, uh, had a, a hole on the top. And they have one very heavy metal marble, which I use for programming. And I put my marble on that. It was, uh, it was uh, very, very wise and, and saved me a, lo a lot of time and energy. So uh, uh, you may ask yourself, I didn't have the computer at that time. You may ask yourself, why, how, how, how could I assemble those programs? I, I wrote down the uh, mnemonic code, and of course, I, I uh, just uh, tra transcribed it to, to binary language by hand on the paper, pen on the paper. And so, 100 and 100 uh, program lines, which are uh, assembled just by hand, not by computer. Uh, I thought it was not hard for me. Uh, maybe you think that it was too hard, but when you don't know that there is a better way, then it's not hard for you. <laughs> then, you <laughs> then you just do it. <laughs> Thank you. So, I had to make a uh, programmer at work, so uh, for the beginning, it. it uh, burned two EEPROMs, not burned regular, uh, regularly, but, but uh, smashed them. <laughs> so I, I, I smashed two EEPROMs, but I, still I had two EEPROMs uh, for, for my work, and it was good. Uh, I, I made my first project, uh, so I could program one EEPROM while another one was erased. I, have, uh, I had the lamp for... Uh, uh, room sun, sun tanning. I don't know. Do, do you understand? It, it's uh, the lamp f with uh, ultraviolet light for sun tanning, and I used it to, to erase EEPROMs, and it was okay. So I had two EEPROMs. I can burn one and, and uh, erase another one, so the process of debugging, uh, software debugging, was going well. <laughs> it was going well. <laughs> But all, all, all by hand. And, and uh, my first project was uh, the game of life. You know, Conway's game of life. It's the brilliant, it's, it's the best algorithm that I ever found. It's the, the beautiful game. I will just tell you in a few words. Uh, you have, it's the kind of cellular automata uh, machine. You have uh, the array 
two-dimensional array of cells. Each cell can be, uh, uh, can be uh, on or off, or live or dead, or alive or dead, I mean. And uh, microprocessor has to calculate for each new generation, it has to calculate, uh, it has to count the live neighbors. It had, uh, each one has eight neighbors, and it, it just, just has to, calc to, to count the number of neighbors which are alive at that moment. So, if uh, the tested cell has one or less, which means one or no live neighbors, it dies in next generation. If it has two alive neighbors, there will be no change. If it was alive, it will stay alive. If it's dead, then it will stay dead. If it has three alive neighbors, it will be born in another generation. It will be alive in next generation. And if it has four or more than four, it dies. So it sounds very, very simple. But those four very simple rules create very, very interesting and, and very complex behavior of the whole field. This is one example. You can see that at the beginning, when you, uh, when you start with chaos, with total chaos, you can see that it, in the beginning, uh, the uh, cells begin to group. You see it here? Some, some group, so they support each other in, in, uh, in living. But uh, this is just the beginning. After some time, uh, this grouping and this organization becomes more and more uh, complex and interesting. This is one example here. On the top, you can see uh, one type of, of organism which is called GAN. It contains uh, two shuttles which go left and right and which create gliders. Those five gliders uh, or four gliders are created and each, it, it, it uh, periodically creates uh, new and new gliders. Those gliders just, just walk in the space just like this, and they walk through the space, through the field of that matrix, and uh, here, down there, is the special organism, I like it very much, it's eater. It just eats those, those gliders and remains unchanged all time. And that's what's fascinating. There are even more complex shapes. See this one. Uh, the right one. Here. It is called puffer train or breeder. It moves from left to right, eternally moves from left to right, and after some times, it just acts like a glider. It's a very big glider. But it leaves some debris after him, which is uh, actually a series of guns. And those guns just fire uh, new gliders here. Those are guns, and they fire gliders on the top. And this is the shape which, which grows, uh, grows uh, unlimitedly. It, it grows forever. It's very interesting. So, I, of course, I didn't uh, have enough uh, material to buy such the, uh, the big field, such the big array, but they could uh, afford the small 16 by 16 array of LEDs. First, I started building some, some bigger uh, life, but, but it, uh, I didn't have enough material. Those LEDs were expensive, and I was lucky enough to, to get uh, a lot of uh, smaller LEDs, so I made the new one. This is my 
in fact, this is second project. As the first one, I, I, I have not, I don't have any more. But this is my second project, which was, which was made, well, I think may, maybe nearly 40 years ago, maybe 37 years ago. This is it, and it still works. You can see it's a, it's a small matrix, small field, 16 by 16, uh, and uh, I, I never had any problem. I never repaired it for 37 years. It still works, and it still works fine. I, I, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And uh, I made a lot of uh, new... Uh, projects with the, with the same game of life, uh, even much more bigger than this, with, with the much better LEDs, which, were, which are lighter and, and, and uh, higher efficiency. But this one is special for me, it's very special. Be before I made it, I was so fascinated by that, by that algorithm which was created by, by Conway, by John Conway. I was so fascinated that when I didn't have the microprocessor and didn't, didn't make this project, I drew, I drew my, my uh, generations on the paper and then just put it like, like the uh, pictures on my wall. And I, I, I couldn't believe that some, some clever organisms can be created just, just by such the simple rules. And I'm still fascinated about it. <laughs> well, then uh, the time had come for me to have my first computer. It was TRS-80. This is my first computer. But uh, the sad part of the story is that uh, our government, government in Yugoslavia at that time, those are late 70s, just didn't want us to have computers. They were forbidden. Well, and not just forbidden directly, but, but uh, some way you couldn't import anything that was more expensive than $500. But you couldn't buy the computer for $500 at that time. So I had to, uh, I bought, bought this computer in USA at that time and I had to ask my friends to buy it for me. I sent them money, of course, to buy it for me and to take the screwdriver and scissors and cut some cable inside and send me into separated buckets. And they did so. They just didn't, didn't uh, understand why should they cut some wires or some, of some new and operational unit, but they did so and I, I got it successfully and I had my first computer. Uh, of course, I'd, uh, it wasn't enough for me. I didn't just want to, to see it working. I must see how it works. And I made for the beginning, I, I had no disassembler, but I made my own disassembler, of course. For it, uh, this this microcomputer works with Z80. A processor, the same one which I used for life, so I was familiar with its assembly language, and I made my own disassemble, disassembler and uh, started to disassemble its code. And those, those are two of thousands and thousands of pages which I printed out because I, I bought the, I, I also buy the Epson impact printer and printed the code and analyzed it. You see a lot of time, the, 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 uh, those were kilograms and kilograms of paper. And <laughs> those are just two papers. I, I maybe have now maybe about 50 papers, not more, but they are all the same. So you see that I, I just, 
I just made some modifications here. I have some suggestions about why do they do it in this way. They are not, they, they are not efficient enough. I, I just made my modifications, <laughs> my modifications which, are, which I'm sure were much better than, than their code. And so on. So, my next step uh, was to make my own computer, which I did, but uh, I was interested in, in uh, graphical working station. I was very much interested in graphic. You see, this, uh, my TRS-80 computer, uh, it has very, very low resolution graphic. It had uh, 64, but, uh, 64 by uh, 128 dots. Can you imagine that? It's the block graphics. 64 by one, uh, no, or uh, 96 by, uh, I'm sorry, 96 by one, uh, 128. Yes, it's a very low resolution. You cannot draw anything with those graphics. And I, I, I had to make my own graphic units, unit, and I make my graphical station. Uh, I don't have uh, the photo of that graphical station, and I don't have that, of course, until now, because I, I always needed new and new uh, projects. I never have had enough material and I had to destroy the previous project to build the new one. So, the only information about this, my graphical station, was this uh, is from some TV, uh, from some uh, TV, uh, it was not show, I don't know how to call it. We, we talk, talked about computers on TV and uh, just unintentionally in one moment someone uh, shot my graphical station. You see here, this is the blue unit on the left. <laughs> and it's the only thing that I have about it now. Uh, this... Uh, Video is on uh, the YouTube. I found it on YouTube, and w I, I was delighted to see my graphical station here. And of course, I I I, I took this this shot and and uh, just uh, brought it here to show you how it looked. It was maybe this big, like the shoe box. And it had the resolution, if I am right, it had a resolution uh, 520 by 800 pixels. It was very high resolution. Uh, it was monochromatic, but with, with eight levels, eight, eight levels of, of black and white. What did I do next? I had to make my first uh, computer animation. The year was 79. Uh, I studied film editing at high school and uh, I was interested in, in movies and I, I just had to make my first uh, computer animation. There were no computer animation soft. There was no software for computer animation at that time. So how could I do that? Uh, I made my own software in BASIC, in programming language BASIC, because it had uh, to do a lot of mathematics. I couldn't do it in assembler, so I did it in BASIC. Uh, I took one Bolex uh, movie camera, 16 millimeter film, Bolex camera because uh, I borrowed one, because it has a, a single frame mode. It has just a frame by frame mode. Then I added some solenoid which could, uh, sh sh uh, which could shoot one frame 
in, and which was connected to my computer. So my computer could uh, draw one frame on the monitor and uh, shoot the camera which was directed to it, which was looking at that monitor. Uh, another thing that I had to do, because I didn't have the dark room, to make one very large wooden box to cover all that and to let it work. It needed a few minutes to... It was extremely slow, of course. It needed a few minutes to make one frame in wireframe mode. Uh, I made two, two shots, two shots, maybe uh, uh, six or seven seconds each of them. They are here. I still have them. <laughs> and I show it, showed it to, to my professor, which was fascinated. He saw the computer animation for the first time in his life, and he was really fascinated. Then he uh, invited all other prof professors to see that wonder, the, the wonder of the world computer animation. Uh, one of those two shots I digitalized uh, on my flatbed scanner, but it, it's not but uh, quite stable. You, 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 you shall see it, but uh, maybe not just in, in perfect. Uh, it, it was shake a little, but it was not the problem with the with, uh, uh, creating computer animation, but with scanning it on flatbed scanner and then assembling it in Photoshop. That's it. <laughs> That's the whole show. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to start it again, but... Oh, I see. I see where's the problem. Here it is. You, you see, even the camera is moving here. <laughs> well, so much about that. Uh, I made several computers uh, for me, for my personal satisfaction and uh, uh, when I was uh, uh, on my vacation I was uh, at the sea and uh, I never liked vacations I never liked the situation situations in which I, I cannot work something but I was freshly married, and I had to go somewhere with my <laughs> wife, and I went to the sea. But I, I didn't know what to do, to, to go to the beach, to lay there on the sun, to bath. So I went to the hotel shop, bought a, a notebook, and bought some pencils, and started to work on some, some new computer concept. Uh, the problem with computers at that time is that you didn't have some, some dedicated chips with, which could generate... The biggest problem for computers at that time is generating good video signal. You had to, to spend more than 50 chips, which means that computers had to be uh, uh, complication and, and uh, the somehow... Um, uh, too, too, it's too risky for something to make do-it-yourself project with, with such a complication computer. I tried to make it as, as simple as possible, and I think that, that, that I made it with the Z88, uh, the Z80 processor, which is the only one that I had at the time. I used the refresh register in that processor in some special way which could help me to generate the, the most critical part of the problem uh, for, for video signal generating. And I made it and, and uh, I did it. 
I was hardly waiting to come back home from the vacation and to, to try it, and, and it really worked. It really worked. It was year 73. It was August, late August 73, I remember. I came home, and in the few days I had the new computer, which was very, very, very simple, easy to assemble, it, and which was uh, easy to, to make it work. Uh, I, I thought that it would be a good idea to publish it somewhere and to offer it as do-it-yourself project for the readers. Uh, somehow I, I, I got the information that somebody somewhere is preparing the new magazine which will be dedicated specifically to the computers, to computers. Uh, at last, I found who it was. It was my friend Dejan Ristanovic. He was just preparing that first issue of first computer magazine in Yugoslavia, which was named uh, Računari u vašoj kući, which means computers at your home. It was planned for the new, uh, a, a new 84 year. So it, the year was 83, and uh, it was planned for the January the 1st of 84. So I had a few months more to prepare that computer as much as I can. I met Dan Ristanovich. He is here. I met him. <coughs> And he was, of course, he agreed to, to offer that do-it-yourself project in the first issue, and uh, we somehow made that concept for the software for that computer. Uh, the software uh, had to be low cost, to be, which means to, to occupy a, a small amount of program code memory, you know. I, I, uh, uh, program code space was very expensive at that time. It was very expensive. So uh, to keep the whole project low cost, I had to, to uh, just to limit it to four kilobytes. But you can't imagine what, what you can put in four kilobytes. I took uh, level one basic, which was free, which was based on free software at that time. I'm not sure how free it was, but it was based on free software. <laughs> I took it, but, but at, uh, at the beginning it was completely stolen. But then I had to rearrange it to, to make some improvements, and I made a lot, a lot of improvements, so it, it was not uh, the same software like in the beginning. It was almost completely my software to the end. I put a lot of new uh, functions and uh, I will talk again about one thing <laughs> later which I was very proud of, but for the beginning just let me tell you that we had to work a lot to prepare the documentation for that do-it-yourself project. Uh, the guy on the left side with the beard is Jova Regasek. He was editor of that first issue of that uh, magazine. I'm at the, at the right side. We were making the first prototypes of that computer. Jova Regasek was the, uh, he was the editor of uh, magazine Galaxia and uh, computers at, at your home uh, at the beginning were just uh, released as the special issue of Galaxia magazine. So he made the proposal to, to call the computer Galaxia, and I, I agreed completely, so it was named Galaxia. This is the schematic for Galaxia. As you can see, it's quite simple. It has a microprocessor, six kilobytes of RAM, and four kilobytes of, of ROM, of, a, of a, a program code memory. 
and one spare socket maybe to, to extend that program code memory, which was uh, realized later. This, uh, those are the instructions how to, to assemble that computer on the PCB and how the, the assemb to assemble the whole unit. And here we have it. Microcomputer Galaxia, which was released in time, even a few days before that new year. I will just tell you about one thing in the software. I'll try to explain it. Uh, now, when I make some software for, for some controllers, I use maybe 5 or 10 percent of program code space. I don't need more. Because program code space is cheap now, is, is very cheap. But it was very expensive at that time. And I uh, wanted to put as much uh, functions in 4 kilobyte limited code space, and I have to, to save each byte of code space. And somehow I managed to use not 100% of space, but more than 100. How did I do that? You see, see the first instruction, I talked to you about this instruction uh, from, from my book, from this book, which is load instruction. From the other, uh, uh, um, from the other position, I had also uh, a part of program which generated the uh, video signal using those, this refresh register, and it just had to to uh, waste 32 instructions doing nothing. Those were instruction NOP, NOP, no operation. But I thought, why, why, why would it be no operation? Maybe I can use it somehow in some other way. You see, uh, at the right side, you see that part of the code which generates video signal. You have, uh, you see, 32 P red letters, which uh, just signifies that 32, uh, uh, 32 clock periods. And those clock periods were uh, just no operations. But uh, at some moment, I had to, to uh, insert some uh, string, some ASCII string, uh, some message which computer had to, to just to display, and that was message, message break. When you uh, see how, uh, for message break, For Z80 microprocessor, if you just execute your message break in the processor. And I saw that those were just load commands. You see, 0, 01, I told you that the that, uh, decoder just decodes just like load instructions. But also the uh, ASCII capitals, B, R, E, A, K, also begin with 0, 01. So I used it just to, to, to use the same code space as the message and as the executable code, you see. So uh, a computer can, can treat it as message break and treat it as code just writing each horizontal line while generating video signal. So I used more than 100%. I never saw that anyone anywhere <laughs> made the same thing to, to make more than... <laughs> to make the more than 100% code uh, 
use. Another thing that I did, I had some more space here. Another thing that I did is just to make some, you see here, those red digits are mainly zeros. I need some constant for, for uh, a floating point arithmetics. I needed some constant and I, I just managed to, to to insert in here in the same video generation routine. So I'm, I, I used 10, 6, this, this zero, 0, is terminator for this zero message, for this break message, and four bytes more. So I used four bytes out of nothing. I, I, I've got, I, I made them somehow out of nothing. And it worked, and it worked. I saved 10 bytes. Fine. I can use it for something, then I used it up to the last byte. So, the first uh, issue of magazine was released. Uh, before it was released, uh, the editor, Jova Regasek, the author of the first issue, Dejan Ristanovic, and I were sitting uh, when the whole work was done, we were sitting, drinking coffee, and talking about how much people will make that computer, Galaxia. How much people? And Jova Regasek asked me, what do you think, how much? And I said, but, uh, if, there, if we have 50 people that will make it, I will be satisfied. And then said, Dejan Ristanovic said, oh no, don't be silly, there will be at least 200 people. And Jova, Jova Regasek said, no, there will be at least 500. And I said, oh no, that's too much, 500. But in the first month, we received 7,000 letters <laughs> of people. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, the <laughs> it's too much, really. <laughs> It was 7,000 letters just in the first month after that magazine. And that magazine was uh, printed again and again and again three times, up to 100,000 uh, uh, magazines. Well, it was very successful. After that, uh, we had somehow to, to purr, how to say that, to educate people what are computers at all. Everybody was interested in, in computers at that time, and nobody, almost nobody knew what are computers. And we were, Dayan and I were invited to TV shows, to radio, to, to, just to, to talk about computers. And uh, each time Dayan got the same question, what the computer can do, and I've got always the same question, how did I get the idea to make the computer Galaxia? And we had uh, maybe 50 times to answer the same questions. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, luckily there were some uh, more creative uh, uh, authors of radio and TV shows. One of them is Mr. Zoran Modli, which is here with us today, sitting in the last row, <laughs> he made uh, one very big move. I didn't agree uh, with him for the first time. He said, let's, uh, let's uh, have some uh, programs for your computer Galaxia at the radio. We will we will broadcast them, those, this program, which is just, just uh, the very unpleasant noise. You see, programs at that time were not held on hard disks or, or on floppy disks, but on, on cassettes, on audio tapes. And you can hear them. It was in, in audio range, and you could also just emit them through your broadcast radio station. 
Zoran said, let's aim it that. And I said, oh, no, no, no it's quite, I think, <laughs> I don't like that idea. It's, it's unpleasant. You, you, will, you will make people run away from your, from your show. And he said, no, no, let's just do it. And we did it for, for weeks, for months, for years. And we had very fine replies about that. I think that, that uh, he was the... At that, that, that time, at that time, uh, some kind of, of uh, wireless war was born. <laughs> you see, we had wireless. Yes, it, in middle in middle eighties we had wireless, just <laughs> through, through through FM radio. Why not? It was wireless. It was just transmitting the digital data through the radio. It was wireless, really, and, and uh, <laughs> the author of that idea was Zoran Madli. He is here with us. <laughs> I said that those were uh, mid-80s and maybe late-80s, but, uh, you know, the 90s, were not so good, so lucky. That's the sad part of the story. 90s game. We had a lot of problems. We had civil war, we had hyperinflation, we had, we had a lot of problems. What shall we do about it? Uh, that was a really bad time, for me especially. Uh, uh, I said it was war, we were all very poor, we were, it was hard to live at that time. Uh, some guys were very, very, gave me some very bad uh, opinions on my computer, on Galaxia, because it was obsolete at that time. Already we had much better, much faster, much more powerful computers, of course, that Galaxia was forgotten. And anybody who talked to me about that at that time told me that Galaxia is a bad computer, it's funny, why did you make so so bad computer? But how can I tell him that I, I cannot... Uh, I cannot fight with someone who has a very, very unlimited budget to make the power microprocessors, powerful computers, and so on. I just cannot follow him. I was forced to feel ashamed a little. At the middle of the uh, of 90s, I had a lot of bad experiences about that, but not only about that. Also, at the, begin at the beginning of 95, first my father died, and 10 days after him, my wife died. Then, at the same year, at the same month, I had to leave my flat. I was informed that I have to leave it, and to move somewhere, I don't know where, with my second child was born, it was not yet two years old. I had no money, I had, hadn't anything, <laughs> you see. And uh, my... Uh, I, was, I was ill at that time, I was very sick, I, was, I couldn't move for six months. I was, I was tightened to bed, with no money, with no hope. And I thought that it will finish very bad in the time. I remember it as that year, as a very bad year. So after six months, I went out of bed, started to, to just recover somehow. And I made my very good project with microchips a microcontroller, PIC 16F84. Uh, Very good project, really. 
I called it the engineer's assistant, and I, and I sent uh, the details about that project to, uh, to uh, Microchip, to their application manager. And uh, I described it to him. It was uh, the, um, some instrument which contained a logic probe, contained serial data analyzer and which contained also the digital single channel analyzer. You see its application here on the photo. And it was one single chip unit. It has only one microcontroller. And it did all that. That microcontroller had only one kilobyte of memory. One kilobyte. I sent him a mail and he said that it is impossible to put so much functions in one kilobyte. And I said, oh, don't uh, you <laughs> tell that to me. <laughs> and he asked me if it's really true to make five that, those units, to send them to factory, which they uh, will use at their conferences to demonstrate what can be done with such uh, the small microcontroller and such low power microcontroller to make so many functions. I did it and sent it to them. When they received it, they said that, that it's a miracle that they will uh, make the big article in all magazines, that they will just uh, a lot of, they promised a lot of things to me and also some fee which I could ask from them. I said that I don't need no money, that I need their development system for, the, those, for their microcontrollers. They said, fine, they are, just do it. I did it and, and made its application note AN6689. Uh, it's still on Microchip's site. Make the whole... Uh, project description and just waited for my fee. But when the time had come for them to, to send me that fee, they said, evidently you, your country is under embargo and we cannot send you anything. Stop. That was the end of our conversation. They didn't answer my mails anymore. Next year, I got my fee. That's it. That's what I've got from USA. We all got the same thing and we know what does it mean. So, I've got my development system eight years after that. Eight years after that, when it was quite obsolete, but well, okay, I've got it somehow. But, uh, uh, things, me, uh, in some, some, some way, things just started to move and to become better and better. People, st people uh, started to, to uh, see Computer Galaxia not just like something which is obsolete, but something which is the part of history, which really is. And I've, first, I've got the, the uh, question for, from a museum, museum of uh, science and technique. Can I give them one computer? Of course, I can, but I don't have it. In '95, when everything was uh, just going down for me, and when I had to, to, to move somewhere, I just took all my prototypes. I had five or six prototypes. I just took them all and just dropped them in the garbage. I don't have them anymore. But somehow, luckily, I, I found in my cellar one which was forgotten. I found one and gave them one. And now it is in the museum. You can see, uh, I really, very honored about that. 
especially because there is a lot of people who are talking about that computer again, about computer galaxy again. More and more people uh, contact me and ask me to send them the software, to set them, to send them the PCB layout and the instruction, instructions how to, to make it. Can you imagine? They now want to make this computer again. Uh, there is a lot of, of simulators of Galaxia for PC computers also. I've seen them. Uh, one guy from Slovenia, which name is Tomasz Scholz, he speaked about uh, Galaxia two years ago on CCC in Hamburg, CCC conference in Hamburg. He even graduated on analyzing the software and hardware of Galaxia and how it works. Uh, my friend Dusan Gruic, also made the single chip version of Galaxia. This is Galaxia. Here is it. He gave me one. And it really works fine. You just, you just connect the VGA monitor, keyboard, and five volts through USB. It only serves for, to supply this PCB. And it works really like Galaxia. So uh, that computer started to live again. And, and I feel better now. <laughs> I really feel better now. <laughs> and what am, what am I doing now? I'm, I still work my controllers, mostly for casino applications. I specialized for uh, shape recognition, optical number, recognition, optical reading, counting, optical uh, recognition of, of casino dice and so on. That's what I do now and uh, I make the controllers for all those things. So, what shall I do <laughs> later? I don't know. But at, at this moment I'm satisfied again and, and I see more and more people which can respect my work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are very kind. Thank you very much. <laughs> we were speaking about Galaxia and it was uh, open source hardware, right? Yes, sure. You do it yourself. Everyone so. could make it at home? Sure, yeah. Was the software also open source? Yes, sure. Okay, so for, for the beginning. Actually, yeah, actually, yes. You were the first guy in the history of humankind that <laughs> made open source hardware and open source software. Well, I don't think that I'm just the first. Maybe, maybe you're right. <laughs> yes, uh, I, the, the, the problem was with uh, EEPROM programming. You see, not everyone has the EEPROM burner at home. And I had to make the EEPROM programmer which programs five EEPROMs at a time. And I made it. So the, uh, everybody sent uh, EEPROMs. Uh, one is for, for code and one is for character generator. Sent to, to, uh, to uh, uh, Racunari Galax, to, to, to the editor. And the editor collected all those EEPROMs in one week and sent me hundreds of EEPROMs <laughs> each week. And I just programmed it and uh, programmed them and packed them again. And we had hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of those EEPROMs which we sent back. 
So, and, and it was just for, for no fee, it was, it was free. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, 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 the, the later I, I had, I wrote a lot for a magazine PC and uh, I, I uh, published a, a lot of projects, I think maybe more than 50 projects. All of them are, are free. All of, all of them are open source, open hardware, open software. I made, I made really a lot of projects and I have no patent until now. No, no. I want to say that I never patented every, anything and, and protected it by law. Everything is free. I beg your pardon? The, the that, uh, some parts of the galaxy were inspired by ZX-81. Where, where? I don't didn't hear it. I heard it. I heard no, no, I, I didn't understand you. That some parts were... Were uh, influenced or uh, inspired by ZX-81 sequence. I never heard ZX-81 and I, I don't... I, do, I, heard, I hear it. It's for the first time that I hear it. I don't think so. I never had ZX81, and, and I was not inspired by yeah, it. Yeah, uh, I just heard uh, from someone something like that, and... Uh, I don't know. The it's for the first time that I hear it. I don't know about <laughs> it, really. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. But he was, he was inspired by earning money, I think. And I was not. I earned nothing. I think that his computer was even cheaper than Galaxia. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. How did you came to the idea to generate the video signal just by using the Z80? I had too much time. <laughs> <laughs> On my vacation. <laughs> I don't know really how, but somehow. I, I, I saw that the refresh register is very, very simple, that it just, just increments after each instruction, and if I select the instructions which all are timed properly, then I can make the proper video signal. Yeah. <laughs> I, but it's a little complication, but just to give you the whole explanation of the okay. process. Yes, yes. It's out of standard, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, it's it's not not quite yes, yes, yes. It's it's not not exactly just it does not follow exactly the regulations for, for video signal, but all all old T V sets at that time accepted it with no problem. Yeah, yeah, so sure. <laughs> I really don't know. You see, uh, uh, I, I saw that uh, on some mailing list, I saw that somebody bought uh, Computer Galaxia at, uh, from some gypsy, just on the street down there. And he bought for, 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 for just... And he said there was only one chip missing. It was 74 LS, uh, 74 161 shift registers. And then I said, "Oh my God!" But that is my computer. I remember when I once I needed that shift register and put it out of Galaxia, which I which I dropped later. It's my computer. How can I contact him to buy it again from him? 
but I didn't manage to contact him. Yes? Are you going on vacation anytime soon? <laughs> I haven't been on vacation since 83. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes some things are very hard to reproduce and to. to <laughs> okay. Yes, but but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, thank you for for your kind words. <laughs> Yes, please. Yes, uh, I, I'm uh, curious about the uh, cellular automaton, uh, the Conway scheme of life. Yes. Uh, uh, how do you generate random numbers? Uh, how do you see the, the grid uh, with random, uh, like? Uh, uh, there, there are a lot of techniques. Uh, I, I use the pseudo number generator, which are standard. This is the, the that's. Uh, 32 bit bits pseudo random generator, and the seed for that pseudo random generator was uh, fed by the checksum in RAM, which is which is mostly random. So I add all numbers in all RAM, which is several kilobytes, and that checksum I use to feed the, the seed for pseudo random generator. And then I have the com uh, enough ra random sequence. I, I didn't. Uh, hear. Did you uh, went to uh, write in very log or HDL to design chips? Uh, no, no, no. Are you considering your plan? Yes, I am planning, but I didn't do it yet. If that's all, then thank you very much. <laughs>